am a certified nerd, I've read 57 books this year, and I've got opinions. Hi friends, thank you for watching, my name is Mia and this is My Virtual Vanity, a place where we both love makeup and we're quite critical of it. Today I'm collaborating with my beautiful, wonderful friend, Mariam. She has a series where she ranks all of her palettes in her collection and also when she shows the, the makeup look, she also shows the outfit, the accessories, what perfume she chooses. I really, really love that idea because it gives a full view of how everything comes together and she's a super stylish lady. I love her. If you've been on my channel for a bit, you know that Mariam is one of the people that I just keep collabing with because she's who I want to be when I grow up, man. Like, she, she's got her shit together. She's such a smart, beautiful lady. Oh, I just love her so much. I wanted to do a video in that way, but I never got the courage to do it because of my body issues. But I had a great body image day a couple of days ago, so we're doing this full body reveal. I'm just cringing. Anyway. <laughs> start with outerwear and Loki says hi so I'm going to use my crop trench coat or I don't know how you say it in English in Romanian we call it a palton and this has been my old faithful for like the past couple of years I bought it before I started being more worried about um, you know how ethical my clothing is um, actually a really interesting thing about this is that this S, while it fits the waist really nicely, when I bent over, it kind of split at the seams because, you know, it, it's fast fashion, it's not the best quality. So I had to sew the lining as, you know, bad as I could. This was one of my first sewing slash dealing with my clothes type of project and I'm happy to say my stitching has long since improved. I'm kind of waiting for this to die its last breath, might be still a couple of years before buying any other camel coat like it. I don't see why I should throw this away just because it's fast fashion instead of using it till its last breath. For a scarf, this is the PS de Resistance. This is a scarf that I got from Lashes and it's got Van Gogh's sunflowers on one side and then the rest of his flower paintings on the other. The obligatory mask. This dress I got, I believe, second year of college or something. The brand is Dresso. I don't know what that is. I bought this before I knew more about garment construction and fabric quality. This is a really synthetic type of fabric, so it's probably cotton mixed with something else, I'm not sure. So I tend to overheat in it, unfortunately. I reserved this dress for the dead of winter. I really like the detailing here on the waist. It's got the same detailing on the back. It gives me great waist definition. I love that. It's just a pity about the fabric, but it, I spent my money on it. It is what it is. I'm wearing it and I'm keeping it until it bursts apart I guess. Boots I'm going to wear my Benaza boots. Uh, Benaza is a Romanian brand and I absolutely adore them. They are very warm, very snuggly. I really really enjoy them. For jewelry I'm going to wear this pendant. I got it in Brasov. I really really like it. It's so pretty. It, be it before had like a red rim ribbon. It didn't have like a, a you know a proper necklace thing and I replaced it with a silver one and I just love how sparkly and reflective it is. For earrings, I'm going to use these silver emerald earrings. They were gifts from my grandmother and now with mask wearing, I can't really wear dangly earrings like I'd like to, so. For a perfume, I'm going to wear Burberry for her, a very warm winter scent, very seductive while being approachable. I really, really like this. It makes me feel all cozy and warm and pretty. I also want to talk about some stuff while I do my makeup and I recently posted a book haul on my Instagram and I've not read those yet but someone asked if I would be willing to make a video uh, on books and here we go. I'm not going to talk about every single book that I have read because it's 57 of them. I still have three to meet my 60 Goodreads book goal so it's too much but I will be talking about what I really enjoyed, the worst of the worst, and we're going to start with non-fiction, then fluff slash romance slash stuff that's not 
fantasy and then fantasy and young adult book. The palette that I am choosing for this video is the Kaleidos Futurism One Sci-Fi Green Palette. This was gifted to me by my beautiful, wonderful friend Melissa. I love it. I love creating real looks in real life with it. Every single goddamn time that I try to do a three looks one palette or that I try to use it in a video, something goes wrong. I don't know what's happening because I do love this. I love using this in real life, but yeah, I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about more about it when we get to the eye look. So the very first book that I read this year spiraled me into a weeks long depression because it was so sad and heartfelt. It wasn't necessarily the type of book that I would have picked up on my own. The description on the back of the book said one thing and I actually got a whole nother thing. I read this book and halfway through I was in the bus so it was pre-pandemic, pre-everything and I was literally crying in the fucking bus reading what was happening in this book. This is non-fiction. By the title Man's Search for Meaning I thought it was some philosophy type of thing, some light reading I was wrong is written by a man that went to Auschwitz and survived. Half of the book is his philosophy on the meaning of life and how you can make your life meaningful and the other half is his retelling of what happened to him in Auschwitz. I'm not going to go into detail. It's a horrifying book in the sense that it is very good, it is very well written, but it depicts some things that if you have any ounce of empathy in you, they will tear you up. It's an excellent book and I think everyone should read it at least once or twice. Another, I would say, on-topic book for 2020 that I read was White Fra Fragility by Robin DiAngelo. This is a, is a hard book to read if you're the type of person that tends to take things personally. Um, if you're the type of person that when someone says white people do whatever you feel offended, this will be a hard book to go through. But I personally really enjoyed it because they're about behaviors that as a society we have and we have internalized and some stuff that we may not realize we are doing that is quite harmful. I like the way that she approached explaining these things, I liked the context that she gave behind them. It's not an accusatory book, it's a book about white privilege for dummies basically and about the racial ecosystem that is prevalent in some western countries, more so in the US. I don't think that this is a universal book because it talks about some stuff that doesn't happen in countries that do not have the same ra racial dynamics but it is very applicable even if you take it outside of the US racial dynamics because I found some behaviors in there that also occur in Romania when we talk about the uh, Roma people. So no matter where you're from, if you read this book and you read it with an open mind, without feeling insulted, without being like hashtag not all white people, you are going to feel very educated and very illuminated about some things that you may be doing without meaning to. On to lighter things, a lighter read was On Looking 11 Walks with Expert Eyes by Alexandra Horowitz. I really really enjoyed this book because it shows how different we see the world based on our experiences. She meets with 11 different people of 11 different professions like a geologist, a typographer, an artist, um, she walks through her city with them and they notice so many different beautiful things. It really makes you appreciate the intricacy of the world around us and the things that we walk by but we neglect because we do not have the right mainframe to appreciate them as they are. Very fun was Stephen Fry's retelling of the Greek mythos. It just shows how ridiculous some of the things that happened there but honestly out of all of the European religions like the big ones like the Greek gods for me are up there because they're incredibly human they are fallible and you kind of know what you're dealing with with them like they will fuck up as much as you will fuck up they're just really strong and they do god shit all of the time so those were the best in fiction. Let's go towards fluff and romance because I read a lot of it during this pandemic. Listen, I just needed... I needed books that assured me that everything will be alright. I've never been into a romance before. 
I've just gotten it, it into it this year and that's because it's nice to read something where you know that there will be a happily ever after at the end. It's comforting to know that whatever happens in that book, the main couple or the main characters will pull through. There will be happiness for all of them and all things will be resolved, unlike real life. Like I've been really pulling away from grim dark retellings even in fantasy because listen if i wanted to see a world that's going to shit in a corrupt population a corrupt government and just everything in constant decay i would just open the door and go outside seriously let's start doing the eye look um i mentioned this is the kaleidos futurism one sci-fi green this is not a beginner's eyeshadow formula these do not blend themselves these are very pigmented pack a punch there is a slight bit of fallout especially with the darker shades the uh shimmers are very impactful very shiny mirror like reflective this is for someone that has a medium to high makeup skill but it, it is very pretty i love the color scheme i love the packaging this is luxe man this is luxe and with my eye look, I'm going to take a crease shade from another palette and then I'm going to put this in the inner part of the crease, this in the outer part of the crease, and then shimmers wherever I want, basically. So in this pandemic, I've read a lot of Teresa Medeiros and Nora Roberts. She is kind of formulaic in these trilogies because every time, despite the setting, she has three women or three men that are somewhat related or in the same setting or friends and then they meet you know their, their romantic counterparts each book is the story of one couple and then the trilogy has a bigger overarching plot i really enjoyed this her writing is really easy to digest uh, it's a it's a good bus read but also a good pandemic read and I've really really been enjoying this world of Nora Roberts uh, Teresa Medeiros is the same her writing is very easy to digest the romance is again really nice really you know body stripping type of stuff there are some problematic elements of it but come on man I'm not reading romance to learn how to be woke I'm reading romance to get to the steamy sex scenes and to see if they get together at the end like come on I've read <laughs> a lot of young adult and fantasy this year. I've read the entire In Sweep series by Ilona Andrews. I really like the setting and it's again an easy read while also being super interesting with original likable characters in an original universe. The shtick is basically that there are special inns where people from different dimensions, different alien races and from all across the universe congregate. These inns have sets of rules that cannot be broken because regular humans should not find out that Earth is literally the perfect bus stop for three quarters of the universe. We follow the story of the main character who is trying to make her in work. You've got a lot of adventure, you've got a little bit of romance, you've got a lot of stuff going on in this superbly unique setting. Another series that I really really enjoyed was the uh, Air Awakens series. I'm on the final book, I almost finished it. Basically the main character lives in a world where it's an Avatar The Last Airbender but in medieval times. She's a library girl and she finds out that she has magic powers after saving the crown prince's life. Obviously, he becomes her main love interest and they have to navigate through her awakening her powers and how she has to grow up from this timid library girl into a badass woman. Her character progression has been simply amazing. I'm not going to spoiler the series but it was worth reading it even though the setting wasn't that unique because I could see how Vala, I, I think that's how I pronounce her name, how Vala, the main character, grew into what she was supposed to be and I could really relate to that journey because it's the same journey that I went through without you know the, the superpowers which sucks I could I could use some superpowers you know I also read another book by Elise Kovat the author of Air Awakens um that was called A Deal with the Elf King basically the main character is a herbalist a healer in her city and every 100 years 
the elf king comes from beyond the veil has to marry a woman a, a human woman so that the fragile equilibrium in nature and the world continues to exist she's not aware that she's going to be the next one picked she thinks someone else was but through a series of circumstances she has to become the elf king's wife she's not happy about it and as they both try to figure out a way out of it a way to figure out why this arrangement must happen to keep nature's equilibrium they develop feelings from each other it's a self-contained book it's not a series i really like the self-contained story of a type of arranged marriage where you learn to care about each other and the fun of it is finding out how they you know how they go through all of these challenges together right i read two margaret rogerson books sorcery of thorns and enchantment of ravens both standalone books so a sorcery of Thorns is in a very unique fantasy setting where books are alive and sentient and with their own interests and some of them are even quite monstrous. And the main character is a libra librarian and she meets a sorcerer slash wizard and basically a lot of shit happens with those books. There's a whole mystery whodunit element to the book. I like the dynamic between them. I like exploring this world where books have a heart and a mind and they have their own interests and they can corrupt you or influence you just absolutely fascinating the setting in her other book which was a uh, an enchantment of ravens again amazing it's another fey romance but the fey are more like the traditional kind of fey where they will basically tear you apart if they could uh, they cannot lie but they're really great at spinning their words so you believe them. You should not promise them things. You should not give them your true name. And you definitely should not make deals with them. The main character is a painter and a very skilled one at that. And the, the fae in this world covet human things. Long story short, the autumn court prince visits. He wants a painting. And she makes the mistake of painting him with emotion in his eyes, which basically marks her as good as dead. We explore the dynamics of these fake courts, we explore the dynamics of the world. I really, really liked it, especially because I like painting as well. And putting true soul in a painting is something that is very hard to do, and it's almost always unintentional. At least for me, the moment that I try to set out to make something with soul, it's like I worry too much about it and the moment it gets past the sketch stage, it loses its charm. Okay, so now that I talked about everything that I loved, let's talk about the worst of the worst. Because there are some books that I simply could not stomach, did not finish. The first one is And I Darken by Kirsten White. And you know this book has good reviews on Goodreads because Romanians haven't been reading it. Listen, I... Maybe the whole book is good, I don't know. I read a couple of chapters and through a temper tantrum, did not finish it. Basically, this is Baby's first Wattpad fanfiction featuring Vlad Dracul. In case you did not know, Vlad Dracul, Vlad the Impaler, was a real Romanian ruler during Ottoman times. He was not a mass murderer, he was not a vampire, he was just a very cruel and ruthless ruler that was forced by the circumstances in which he ruled to be as badass and as heartless as possible. That's kind of how the times were back then. And I Darken basically is Vlad the Impaler fanfiction where you've got the main character, which she's a woman, Big mistake first and foremost there because women in Romania at that time were just a little bit above cattle. We didn't have many rights. We were kind of busy raising children and taking care of the house, whatever. And her brother Radu, which is a historical figure, actually. So the first strike was that she named this female child Lada. Lada is not a Romanian name. You could say it's Russian, but it's the name of a car. You would not name your name Lada. You would not name your name Lada in Romania at the time. And even now, if you were a noble or if you were a peasant or just no. 
at least research your names before giving your special snowflake main character a name. Whatever. whatever. Bothered me was how she just took this setting that she thought was completely cool, did not do any research, and just used it as a back backdrop for her story. And to me, it's bothersome to me. It feels like cultural appropriation. It felt disrespectful. You are taking a whole country's history and using it as a cool backdrop without even being truthful and faithful to what happened at the time. Romania is a real country. We are real people with real feelings. We are not your cool vampire aesthetic. If you want to make us your cool vampire aesthetic, at least, at least, do a modicum of research. It's not the 1800s anymore where you can just write a novel about Vlad Dracul and have everyone die after it. The other one was Spindle's End. This book had potential and I've read other books by the author and I love it. She has very beautiful writing, very lyrical, evocative. It just, it just opens your mind's eye to imagine all of the beautiful things that she says, but I read a hundred something pages of the, this book and nothing was happening. Just endless descriptions of endless descriptions of every single little irrelevant thing that was happening. And you know what? Except that only from Lord of the Rings. Okay guys, uh, that was it. That was me showcasing the Kaleidos palette, ranting about the highlights and lowlights of my book reading in 2020. Please do not forget to check out Mariam's video and Mariam's channel. Link to everything down below, including the products that I used in this look. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and don't forget one wonderful morning, evening, second breakfast, third lunch, or whatever it is where you're from. Bye.